We are the girls of the Holistic Health Diary. I'm Ange Peters. And I'm Jillian Mandich. And we hope that through our podcast, you will find ways to live for the greener good by eating more green, living more green, and spending your green responsibly. Hey, hey, welcome to our first episode, everybody. I'm Ange Peters. And I'm Jillian Mandich. And we thought for our very first podcast that we would do a video cast um, because today we're doing total Q&A. Total Are you Q&A. ready for this, Jill? <laughs> so thank you, guys. Thank you for your awesome questions. Um, we scrolled through them and picked out 10 of our, um, I guess, favorite questions. Some of them were a little more involved. So we thought we would turn those into a future podcast episode. Mm-hmm. We had some really great questions. Yeah, so. thanks for all the questions. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I think before we get started, we will um, maybe we'll just do a quick update. What's going on? Um, yeah. So what's going on with you? Um, okay, well, for those of you that know me through Whole Fit, through my um, website, I just launched a whole bunch of new classes. So um, I did my second meal prep in the kitchen webinar on Sunday, and it was a, fun. It was yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> and uh, I love that one because um, I think that's a really key piece for people is just getting you know, ahead of the week and prepping to be healthy Mm -hmm. because it doesn't happen by accident. So um, that was a really fun one. And I do those um, twice a month. So my next one will be in a few weeks. Um, And then, oh, eat clean, get lean. So I do this workshop in person and I'm doing, I'm taking this online for the first time. So I'm really excited. Um, And it starts Saturday, Feb 16th. At oh, 6.30 yeah. in the morning, yeah? Are you going to tune in? Oh, I'll be up for like two hours. <laughs> yeah, you're like the oldest, youngest grandma I know. Um, so anyway, I'm super pumped about that. Um, for those of you that live in London, I do a lot of my workshops um, in person through Rebirth Wellness Center downtown. So it's a pre- and postnatal wellness center. And um, up until now, I've only ever done it um, in person. So we'll see how this goes. It should be super fun. So you can check out my website, wholefit.com, for uh, more info on dates for that. And then I have one more update. Can I sneak it in? Okay. Um, So this is really cool. I was approached about doing a women's wellness retreat in April in Muskoka. So way up north. It's beautiful. um, And it's going to be set in, um, it's off a golf course called Diamond in the Rough. And they have these really gorgeous cottages. And there's eight cottages and they fit six women per cottage. And I'm heading up there the weekend of April 19th. And it's going to be a total wellness weekend. So the Friday night we're kicking off with... um, you know, a group icebreaker slash game session, and then I'm doing a candlelit yoga and intention setting workshop to kick off the weekend. And then Saturday morning, um, there's yoga in the morning that I'm leading, and then I'm doing a juicing and smoothie seminar, doing a boot camp at night. And then um, one of my newest friends, Mary Hilbert, is a raw vegan chef from Toronto. She's coming to teach. Yeah, totally up your alley. (laughs) Maybe your mom should come too. Um, So she's coming to do uh, raw cooking classes throughout the day, and all the ladies that come make their own raw vegan dinner for that night. And then Sunday, we've got some fun stuff planned. And Oh, Saturday night, we're doing a beauty bar, a holistic beauty bar. So um, they lots come in. Lo- yeah, lots of coconut oil right on that night. And red wine, organic red wine. Oh, so nice. it'll be super fun. So the details are going to be up, hopefully, middle of this week on my website. So awesome. I think you should come. I know. I feel like Maybe we could do a podcast from there. That would be fun. That would be fun. I'm with the Muskokas. Yeah. Okay, that's it for me. What's that's going on with me. you? Um, I've been busy. Actually, I was in the kitchen a lot this past weekend. Uh, Shocking. Developing some, some recipes for Oxygen Magazine. So Sweet. I uh, just sent one of those off today. So Nice. Because the last one you did was a smoothie. Pumpkins. 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 Right around Thanksgiving? Yeah. yeah. Pumpkin. I did a pumpkin puree and then all sorts of different recipes that you could use with the pumpkin puree. Ooh. So this next one's really good. It'll, you can't uh, give us any hints? No, or? no. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the pictures on Instagram, yeah. so I was trying to figure that out. Um, and, uh, oh, and... You know how I'm trying to be a better meditator, so mm. I, uh, I just <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> You're manifesting yeah. that, eh? <laughs> okay. So I just downloaded this really awesome um, meditation, and it's called Jai Release, and it's um, oh. it's wonderful. And Julie leads it, and it's it's really easy. It ha- teaches this. She teaches this humming technique, and then you go through and you do it every day for 30 days. And humming like of- a bird. Yeah, so she, she teaches it, and then you kind of just follow her through, and she guides you through it, and mm. uh, and I sit with Amara, my dog, and uh, we just sit. Can you give us a quick 10-second clip Actually, of what this would sound like? Yeah, I, I probably can. While you're doing that, can I just talk about our mutual love for ritual? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Jai release. So his wife, Julie, mm-hmm. leads us. And I think 
we first started talking about Rich because I read his book Finding Ultra yep, back yep. in the summer and I don't know that you knew about him no, at I that point like that. And, you, yeah. and he's like basically a vegan superhero oh. in the world and just has a really cool story oh go, something here. fun's happening see so it's humming oh I love it so there's different tracks that you go through and then uh, you, you've been doing this every morning this is my third day okay so cool. day, day three of 30 and uh, I love I it. thought you looked a little more Zen today I when love you the in. vibration that it creates it's just the energy in your body it's it's amazing. it's working yeah. mm -hmm. I think you should do it with me what, so what time do you get up to this uh, 430 yeah it's so not you can happening. do it anytime <laughs> you can do it at night and actually she suggests that you do it twice a day so oh. I've only been doing it once a day so far but I I need to I, you know what, Joe? I would like a better morning routine, to be yeah. honest. I do need that in my life. There are nights when I'm getting up at various times throughout the night um, to feed one child still. And, <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I wake up feeling a little bit behind. So I, I think I need to start my day off on a better foot. That would be good. Yeah. I um, On that same note, um, a friend of mine turned me on to Robin Sharma, who does this thing called the um, holy hour, which oh. is you get up at uh, like, you know, with the sun or five, five thirty in the morning, you do this, um, 20 minutes of exercise. So basically fasted state cardio, and then you go into kind of a planning session for the week and then a journaling session. So oh. after an hour, you've kind of hit all those pieces of holistic health yeah. in a way. Right. Yeah. And, um, and then he, you know, he advocates going about your day, your nine to five or whatever, and then coming back and doing strength training at five o'clock. So you're splitting up your workouts a little bit, but the idea is that you go into your day really fresh, right? And you've, yeah. so yeah. I don't know, maybe we can incorporate some of that yeah. into Robin, Robin Sharma's plan. Well, should we get into it? Yeah, Are let's do it. Questions? Let's do All it. Right. So, uh, the first question, uh, let's talk about our typical day of eating, mm -hmm. including supplements we've including got here. Including supplements. Yeah. All right. Do you want to start? Sure. So I, um, I've been playing with my diet a lot over the years and right now I'm really into, uh, playing with intermittent fasting. Mm. So I try to allow like uh, about 12 to 16 hour window when I don't eat. So from whatever at nighttime I wait in the morning, generally I'm not hungry anyway and it just sort of works out. But so I generally have this window every day where I don't eat. And, uh, and then in the morning, the first thing I drink every morning is my warm lemon water. Yes. So good. So I just squeeze half of a lemon into, and then I put some hot water and some cold water. <laughs> <laughs> and then Leon, okay. I was at her house the other day and she's like, why don't you just put warm water? But I boil water and then I add cold water. I don't know why. Uh, okay. So yeah. It's warm, but it's... Well, when you get up at 4.30, these are things you have time to do. <laughs> so lemon water. And then... Uh, I pretty much, I'm really trying to be more in tune with my body and eat when I'm hungry mm -hmm. and really learn my hunger cues. So I eat real food, basically. So I just, sure. um, I don't buy anything with a barcode on it. Oh, that's it's a good way to, yeah. That I do, and I just, um, I make a lot of my own food and um, vegetables, fruit. Um, I do eat meat these days. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Jill, maybe it's just so our <laughs> learners can understand. You are the ultimate example of somebody who uses your body as an experiment. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that about you because I think you're all about, you know, you don't subscribe to a label of any sort, but you just kind of ride the trends of health. Not the trends, but you, yeah. you basically, you stay current on information and what's the healthiest approach to eating and you try it's it. right for me at the time. Exactly. Which isn't necessarily right for me. In year 10 years, from now, yeah. From now, yeah. I, I went uh, for a long time. I was vegetarian pretty much vegan and then my iron plummeted and I just I reintroduced meat into my diets well first I went to the keg and got really sick but oh, after that, that's I, a good that, start <laughs> I gently brought meat back into my diet and my body's really responded positively to it so my irons back up and I have a lot of energy so mm -hmm. I just I'm really uh mindful of where I get my meat from. I source it all locally. It's all grass fed and organic. Awesome. And that. And uh, so, yeah. So and the point is, you're feeling great now feel because great. you've landed on something that works for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I wanted to come back to the intermittent fasting because I first. Um, I first, I first kind of played around with that myself when I was studying precision nutrition. Yeah, Is that where you first yeah. heard of it, John Brody? Yeah, John Brody. Okay. Because yeah. that, and I, and I actually, I, I do think that. Um, everybody could incorporate that into their week in some way. Mm -hmm. Some people do it to different degrees, but and some people are probably already doing it without realizing, right? Like yeah, you, yeah. You have and dinner at eight o'clock at night. I don't really realize that I'm doing it. Right. It's just kind of 
if you get in touch with your body's hunger cues and yeah and it really helps to work on that relationship you have with food totally and that's what i love about it yeah and you it's not that you're hungry it's habit it teaches you to be more present Mm -hmm. with your food and chew each bite and eat slower mindfully yeah cool all right so so that's sort of my day i i don't like eat a certain amount of meals or whatever i just sort of eat snack um in terms of supplements i do liquid d in the morning and uh, and then I take our fermented cod liver oil, mm-hmm. butter oil blend from Green Pastures. Yeah, yeah. I was, Mutual I love. I used to take just fish oil, and then I switched to fermented cod liver oil, and now I'm doing the cod liver butter oil blend. Yes. Same as you. Uh, the chocolate flavor. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard Shock. cinnamon tingle is really good too. Oh, we should try I've heard it's nice. actually the the best flavor of them all. So, and guys, just so you know, we'll put links in the show notes to everything we're talking yeah. about today that um, is linkable, mm-hmm. so that you can check it out. Is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> um, I take a probiotic uh, in the morning, and I rotate between two different probiotics. Mm-hmm. I also uh, throughout the day, and I pretty much try to eat something fermented with every single meal. Cool. Uh, I'm really into that right now and into gut health, um, fermented things, kombucha, kefir, um, sauerkraut, kimchi, uh, all sorts of different things. And you know what? That is going to be hands down the trend for this year, I think, when it comes to nutrition. I think it totally is. And I think people are really catching on to that. Like, it's definitely in the news more. People know about probiotics more, but Mm -hmm. I feel like... Like, definitely what's old is new again. And I I think the thing that people always find interesting about you and I is we do not look like your typical, you know, I don't know what the right word is, like hippie, granola, like just, we're like grandmas, right? We are living in the older generation, Mm -hmm. but we're making it cool, I think. (laughs) We're making, like, uh, sauerkraut cool again. So, and, um, yeah, we're looking at ways, I think, this year to... um, develop people's awareness around it through workshops yeah. and products and I stuff. So about fermented food. Yeah, we totally will. There's yeah. a, there's, that's a whole world that needs to be understood by everybody. So, so okay. So I also take E3 Live. It's a okay. green algae. And I take a B. Cool. And at night, sometimes if I remember, I take Cal Meg. Cal mm, Meg. Yep. That's, yeah. I got um, into that when I was I'm pregnant. If I'm stressed, if it's exam time or a lot going on in my life, I will take holy basil Okay. as well. Um, I put, I'm really into maca right now. Okay. Why are you feeling stressed? Hormonal? No, no I just, I, I like, really like the taste of maca. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I find it's energizing. Malty. Mm-hmm. And uh, post-workout, I take BCAAs and fermented Okay. Creamy. It's one thing so I've I never done. I don't take done. anything pre or during or any of that sort of stuff. Yeah. But post-workout, I do take BCAAs, so branch chain amino acids. Do you do a protein powder? Um, I have a couple. I have the Sun Warrior, the yeah. raw... The coconut chocolate. It's my fave too. Mm-hmm. And I also have um, a organic grass fed whey one from Progressive. Really? Yeah, it's pretty good. Organic grass fed. Where do you buy that? At Spartan Nutrition. In London. In okay. London. And uh, and it's awesome. The flavor is good. They have a vanilla and a chocolate, I think. Um, but and would it cost about the same as no, some more bowls and then? I know. Hit refresh and it builds a page. How long have you worked here for? Uh, it'll be two years in April. Oh. So. oh, now we can actually see it as we go. Yeah, it's working. Oh. All right, cool. <laughs> okay, awesome. sweet. Thanks we'll so much. About 15 minutes to go. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's open up talking about, um, oh, I'll, I'll just say, so do you take a protein powder? Okay. okay. So do you take a protein powder? I do. I take a couple. Um, I have uh, the uh, Sun Warrior, the coconut, the raw coconut coconut. Go chocolate coconut or whatever that one is. Who makes that? Sun Warrior. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. You have the same one. Yeah, I use the I just use the natural. Oh, okay. I have the raw one. Tastes like. And so that's my like vegetarian protein source. Okay. And then I also have a, a grass fed whey that uh, I get. oh, it's um from Progressive, and it's non GMO and. Uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Are you a fan of non GMO, Jill? <laughs> Hashtag Jill non GMO <laughs> bandage. <laughs> um. Hi, Zach. And, yeah, so I get that one at Spartan Nutrition here in London. Okay. And it, the brand is Progressive, and I really, really like it. And uh, Grass-fed whey. Grass-fed. I've never seen that on the shelf. Yeah. That's cool. It's good to know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do you notice any um, differences digestively w- between spartan rice protein and whey? Um, I do. I had a hard time digesting whey for a while, but um, since I... Because finished, of the source, yeah, maybe? Yeah, okay. And I, with this one, for some reason, it doesn't cause any... 
digestive upset. <laughs> we don't so, need specifics. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I really, really like it, and it's it's been working really well for me. I don't eat a ton of protein. I'll put it in my, my green smoothies uh, from time to time and stuff like that, but I really try to get my protein from actual real yeah. protein sources. Yeah, yeah. Good. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so my day. turn. Okay. So I also wake up every morning and have a you big, wake up every morning? I do wake up every morning <laughs> excited for the day and I have a big glass of lemon water. So I do about 20 ounces with half of a lemon squeezed in. And then I give that about 10 minutes to do its thing in my body and give alkalize. some love to my liver and alkalize. Do you say alkalize or alkalinize? I say alkalize. I okay. said both. I'm not sure which it is. We should look that up. Anyway. Start off with an alkalized system, and then after that's done, it's sink for about ten minutes. I'll either have um, a green smoothie. Cheers! We forgot to cheers. Oh, cheers! Hello, cheers! <laughs> green smoothies all the way. Um, so sorry, my mic keeps doing its flippy flip here. Um, so yeah, I'll have a big green smoothie, and I did a video on my website last week on what I put in my own personal concoction. Um, if anyone's interested. With cilantro in there? <clears throat> there's, yeah, there's a lot of cilantro in this one today, baby. We're going to have good, clean blood. Um, so, and then if I don't do a green smoothie, and maybe I'm having a little more of a hectic morning, I'll pop in a couple slices of spreaded to uh, bread. So I like Ezekiel brand, and I'll slather that with coconut oil and nutritional yeast and hemp seeds. Um, or I'll do an organic Greek yogurt with some fruit and some spreaded buck buckwheat or something like that. Um, and then lunch for me is usually a really big salad. Um, in the winter, I'll saute my greens mm -hmm. over the stove with some coconut oil and just make like a warm salad mm -hmm. or, you know, in the summer. I like to eat raw, but I also feel like living in a seasonal climate, it's important to eat warm foods as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big fan of promoting more raw in the summer months. But anyway, yeah, that's lunch for me. Um, for protein with my salad, I'll have um, either organic chicken breast, hard-boiled eggs, um, and then I always throw in like half an avocado. I eat a lot of healthy fats in the day. I think you do too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and then dinner, um, whatever I'm making for the fam jam, it will be you know some kind of protein source. We like lentils, chickpeas, um, black beans. Uh, as I said, I've been adding in more meat, so organic chicken. Um, and then whatever I'm making for them, that's like uh, if I'm if they're having quinoa or spaghetti noodles or cauliflower mash or anything like that, I'll have it, but I'll, I'll also saute a couple cups of greens. I'm a big fan of greens oh, yeah. all day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really, I, I guess personally how my diet's changed in the last few months is adding in a little more meats and, um, and, and <laughs> wink, bra. wink, and bone broth. <laughs> yes, I saute everything in that now. And um, wheat. I, I'm like, to I'm pretty much excited from like a couple mornings where I have that bread. I'm totally off wheat and I've noticed a big change. Yeah, I've probably, yeah, you know, I've lost about 10 pounds of body weight, like water weight, I think, <laughs> which is weird. Supplements? Um, okay, supplements. So same as you, I do take fermented cod liver oil, which, man, I can't say enough about that stuff. Oh, it's amazing, eh? It's green so good. Pastures. Yes, green pastures, and we'll do a link, just so you guys know, anything we talk about in the pod, we'll um, link up in the yeah, show notes. Especially but, with fish oils, right? It's mm, really important that you get it from a source that you're comfortable Absolutely. And the interesting thing with cod liver oil, everyone has been hearing about this for years, that it's really important to take it, but it, years you know, before us, it was always fermented. And that's why the real benefits were always touted. So that, it's a real difference in absorbability and, and all of the you know, vitamins. So like vitamin A, for example, women who are having issues with skin, um, fermented cod liver oil can really help with that because the vitamin A is more absorbed, being that it's fermented. So Lots of, yeah, really great product. So I do that. I do, um, I, I do take a, a powdered probiotic by HMF, Genestra. Um, not every day, though, because like you, I really try to incorporate a lot of um, fermented foods in my diet. So I make my own water kefir at home. You do your own dairy kefir, raw dairy. Um, and then, uh, so I have that every single day. I'll have at least one or two cups. And then I've made sauerkraut, kimchi. I play your kombucha yet? No. Okay. No, I've got to get on that. You gotta yeah, hook me up. I need a scoby. Um, and then I also take B12 once a week. I have like a, a 5,000 milligram dropper I take um, just because I don't eat a ton of meat. And then um, D3, when I remember, this is the one that I always forget yeah. to take, but I do take a vitamin take D3. A or a um, no, it's 5,000, um, the, tablets. the tablets. Yeah. Do you take with a fat? Probably because I, I take it with my meals and I always have fats in my meals. But yeah, it's, it's a fat soluble. Right? Yeah. All right. I think that's it. Yeah, so let's go on to the Top second question. Three skincare brands. 
Ooh, fun That's a fun one. Good question. All right, on okay. to you. Do you want to go first or want to go first? No, we would probably have the same things. I didn't even look. Okay. We tried to keep them a secret when we brought. <laughs> okay, so obviously I have to start out with coconut oil. Boom. Uh, this is my mini jar. Isn't it so cute? It's adorable. I know, it came free with a big jar. And uh, this is How big was the big jar if that's the little jar? (laughs) (laughs) The big ass jar. Um, I have coconut oil everywhere. But um, this is my bathroom coconut oil jar. Sweet, yeah. And uh, so I wash my face with it. I use it as moisturizer, lips, makeup remover, pretty much anything. What doesn't it do, really? It does everything. It's like the best thing. And this one is organic and it's... uh, Unrefined. Organic, yeah. Virgin... Does it smell like coconuts? Oh, it's amazing. Because that's a key indicator uh, of really? a bad coconut oil. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and often, oh, often the, oh, <laughs> it's liquefied, apparently. <laughs> often the um, refined coconut oil will not <laughs> smell like coconut oil. Can I have some of that, please? Okay. My cuticles are dry. <laughs> um, um, we need to, we're going to do an episode on this coming up on all the uses. Oh, okay? oh yeah, let's do it. Like that. one in the kitchen, one in the bedroom, one in the bathroom. One in your dun, dun, dun. Well, that sounds bad. Um, okay, so my second, <laughs> my second thing uh, is oh, Dr. Yes. Bronner's. This is uh, credit to you. Um, that the, actually, the first time I ever got it was when you taught me how to make laundry soap. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were at yeah. Foods, you, me, and Leon. Yeah. Me, Leon. And how are you liking that? And I'm loving it. So, Good. So Ange taught me how to make uh, laundry soap with this. And, yeah. And... Uh, so that's my laundry soap now. Which is also I something I learned when I was dealing with my daughter's eczema. I got rid of all the, anything that even sounded healthy. I was using this healthy laundry detergent. It had essential oils, but it was still causing issues. So. so I use it for that. I use it as body wash. Yep. Uh, face wash. More in the morning because I find this one's peppermint. And I find it very stimulating. Isn't it awesome? So I can't use it at night to wash my face. Oh, okay. I use the almond one at night. Uh, yes, and the <laughs> almond is so good too. That's actually, and is that the one I brought? Did you bring? I bought, oh no, I bought tea tree oil. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, and I use it for cleaning and pretty much for everything. I love it. It's amazing. And my third uh, beauty product is apple cider vinegar. Oh, cool. Yeah, totally. And I use it as a toner. So after I wash my face with my coconut oil, and sometimes I'll use baking soda to exfoliate. Yep. <laughs> and then Peter's tip. Uh, <laughs> then I'll use uh, apple cider vinegar as a toner. And, uh, yeah, so those are my top three. It was really hard to pick. Well, uh, it wasn't at all. It's not hard to pick because we probably use, like, <laughs> just those products. Yeah. And it's so liberating because I, um, I mean, I used to easily, I would go to, like, Walmart and drop $100 in their beauty section mm-hmm. <laughs> in my 20s. I would just go with no purpose yeah. and leave with all these products mm-hmm. I didn't need. So um, over the last five years, I've really detoxed my beauty products and, and narrowed it down. And I, I find it's awesome to not, like, now you watch TV, you see a commercial, and you need this latest skin cream? No, I don't. <laughs> I use coconut oil. So what are your three? Okay, so my three. So I'll just start with Bonner's too. Um, and it's available in tons of sizes, right? So yeah. I've got like the little one in my gym I bag. Think there's even like a one in between. There's them. even a bigger one than that too. Oh yeah, there's the, the big there's gallon. One too, yeah. Like, Which I would, if I was to get that one, I'd probably, I'd probably, uh, I don't know, actually I might get the almond one because it's a little more subtle. Yeah. But um, I have the tea tree one here. And again, yeah, same uses. I use it for face wash. Um, cleaning products. I make all-purpose cleaners with it. There's, there's just like, it's like the new duct tape. There's so many uses. Okay, and then I, <laughs> yeah, there's a market for that. I'm missing one of them. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, so I brought two of my brands that I wanted to share that I do use when I use skincare. So the first is Anne-Marie Gianni um, Skincare. Love this stuff. You can, and I wanted to pass this to you. This is their, their coconut body oil. And um, Kevin Gianni, her husband, has the, I think his show is called The Health Renegade. He's been on for a long time. Really, really great information that they put out. And that's his wife. That's her oh, company. Non-GMO. Non-GMO, baby. Oh, there. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> awesome stuff. Um, so again, that's Anne-Marie Gianni. I'll put a link in the podcast notes. The other one is Living Libations. Have you heard of them? No. Oh, they're so cool. Oh, um, no, it, but it's not. It? This is called their Rose Complexion Mist, and oh. they have a whole line of beautiful. So what I like to do at night, my routine is I oil cleanse um, with coconut oil on my face. Oh. rub it in, let it sit with a warm washcloth, and then I use a little drop of Bronner's to take off the oil, and then um, I'll put more coconut oil on as my moisturizer, and then I spray this rose glow. Nice. And oh, um, so nice. it's just, yeah. It's like a hug. It's an, it is, it is. It is just, it's kind of meditative for me yeah, at night. Like so it. so that's my, awesome. my three. All right. Uh, what are your two favorite books? <laughs> did you bring them? I brought, oh. yeah, did you bring your books? Yeah. 
You go bought first. a library. I know. I you have to show really, two. I had a really hard time picking out my books. So obviously, I um, okay. so I, I started with Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you kidding? No. I haven't even cracked a spine on it yet. <laughs> when everyone's reading it and I haven't read it. There is a whole table at Chapters right now of Fifty Shades of Grey paraphernalia for Valentine's Day. <laughs> this is like a dream come true for Matt, eh? I know, right? Whatever. Okay, okay. so um, for real, I, I picked, I wanted a cooking book and this is my, this is Nourishing Traditions and uh, this mm. is actually my second purchase of the book. So I had to pick it. My first one just, um, I spilled too much and the pages were all stuck together well loved eh? yeah, you very well loved and i love it because um at the beginning they go through and they sort of break down what are fats what are um <laughs> i'm sorry i keep looking at 50 shades of gray <laughs> there you go. put it away <laughs> um and and they have a lot of research in it as well which obviously i love so they they kind of go through a little bit of an introduction so it's a good teaching tool as mm -hmm. well as a cookbook definitely they have a lot of um, fermented things in here, which I love. Is that how you first got turned on to, like, bone broth, fermented it is. foods? It actually, yeah. It is. Yeah. Now that I think back. Because this, this is the Weston Price Foundation mm -hmm. book, right? Yeah, and this is how, that's how I found out about it. And uh, and they have, like, all sorts of, um, all sorts of amazing, amazing recipes. So that's my one. Nice. And then my new book that I'm, obs or actually, no, this is an older one, but I'm obsessed with right now is uh, Timothy Ferris. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm smashing my mic. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of love going on there for Mr. Ferris. Yeah, I love, love, I just love this book. I read it <clears> in <throat> one day and, and no, now actually probably less than four hours. But, <laughs> and so he has the four hour work week and then four yeah. hour body, four hour chef. Um, I haven't read the four hour chef yet. And, uh, but I just love his sort of idea of, you know, economy of time and, mm -hmm. Um, you know, defining what you want and limiting your, he says, going on an information diet, which really resonates with me because... I like think, cutting the noise out? Yeah. Just, yeah. And uh, just sort of how to automate things that don't need your time and really to be focused on. Oh my gosh. I need to read that love, book. Are you done? Book. Yeah. But I can't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to read it too. You'll love it. Just so I, I, I absolutely will. And uh, he's awesome. And maybe one day we'll, we'll have him on the podcast. Oh my, absolutely. Because he's awesome and... And obviously he's tuning in to this very first episode. Yeah. If he's not, I'm going to tweet the crap out of him <laughs> and let him know. Um, that's awesome. I love that idea. I'm all about efficiency too, yeah. so I'm excited to read that. Okay, so um, my great. two... Well, okay. I know, you're right. The well, two of them are kind of like the same topic. Shades, one is not Fifty Shades of Grey, I can promise you that. Um, okay, so two, I just wanted to highlight two of my favorite health books. So the first one was the Beauty Detox Solution, and this was the first time that I had ever um, heard about green smoothies, and really, um, I read it about the same time that I read the fabulous Chris Carr's Crazy Sexy Diet. And I love them both because they talk a lot about alkalizing the body, which, as you know, but maybe some of our listeners don't know, um, everything we eat, everything we do has either an acidic or an alkaline effect, alkalizing effect on the body. Okay, so even a food like lemons is very acidic in nature, but it's alkaline in the body. So anyway, they talk about a lot of those approaches. Something like cancer, for example, cannot thrive in an alkaline body. So that's all I need to know. That's all everyone needs to know. The second book I love <laughs> is The Firestarter Sessions by Danielle Laporte, and she is awesome. I love her. Um, and I highlighted one of the quotes here, which oh. I just love from the book. Oh. Your hunger will lead you home. And it's true. I love that. Isn't that great? Yeah. So simple and so true. Follow your heart. Yeah. Follow your hunger, your drive. That's so funny. I made a vision board on the weekend. Yeah. The word home is like big right in the middle. You need this book. You want to trade? Yeah. yeah, let's trade. All right. Let's do it right now. <laughs> All right. Good. Hey, Tim. What's up? Okay. So, yeah. Those would be my two. Awesome. Check them out. So. Okay. okay. So, what? Okay. Wow. We got to get rolling. Oh, yeah. All right. I want to get healthy. Where do I start? So, Jill, what would be your top two tips? Uh, my top two tips would be to set small goals and celebrate small victories along the way. Like, I feel like instead of just looking to the end and, you know, the destination, it's all about the journey and the process. And I'm shutting. Um, <laughs> and so really celebrating and enjoying the process and being present as you go through and celebrating all those small things. And my second That's one good. would be uh, take a probiotic. 
it's one small thing you can do every mm -hmm. morning to kickstart your gut and you know reaffirm that health action and it's a simple thing that can be a constant reminder every day cool awesome everything starts with the gut baby it does <laughs> you are what you uh, digest yeah. and eliminate <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> oh let's not go there. Okay, so my two would definitely, so my first is always water intake. I always come back to that. Again, I think that's a really simple place for people to start. Generally, you're looking for about half your body weight in ounces is what all the experts tell us. Um, but really, it's it's watching your body's cues. Your urine should not be right yellow. Um, unless you take a B. Yeah, unless you take a B or, or a cheap vitamin will mm -hmm. show up, right? Um, but also when you start to feel those, those signs of dehydration, so headaches, dry skin, tired, low energy, you're already dehydrated, right? So and it only takes like a 1% drop in, in um, water intake to cause those effects. So it's really important to try to stay on top of it. So water intake for sure. The second one for me would be being planful. So scheduling in your workouts like you would any other appointment, right? And holding yourself to it because what you schedule... You will, word. you will do. I don't know. Stop judging. <laughs> planful. Be planful. Plan. Schedule in your workouts. Meal plan. If you don't know how to meal prep, come to my webinar on the 24th. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm, I've, absolutely. Use your calendar to plan in your health. Okay, next question, number five. What's the best part of your day, Jill? The best part of my day, hands down, is my morning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a crazy early riser. I just, my body wakes up early and I'm just, I'm so energized. And actually I was, um, I tweeted this morning, um, tweet, tweet. yeah, at, I was listening to the introduction of my meditation that I'm doing mm -hmm. and, um, and Julie said something like between four thirty and six, the world is sleeping. And so you, there's more energy available to you at that time. Oh, cool. And I, or something like that. She mm -hmm. said it much more beautifully than that, but the idea just sort of, no, that was beautiful. I, <laughs> I love it because it's true. Like I get so energized in the morning. So I wake up and, uh, and I meditate now or before I would just, um, I sit with Amara and I read mm. and we just have cuddles and Amara, your puppy my, love. My, my baby. Um, she's 95 pounds or 90 pounds. I think. Um, anyways, oh. so we just have quiet time and you know, I do my, my planning on my goal setting for the day. And awesome. So that's my favorite. Love it. All right. Well, I'll take the flip side. My favorite part is probably the end of day or when I put my, not when I put my girls down to bed sounds really bad, but it's actually the process involved in that. I, I love the snuggle time. Um, my oldest right now is three and a half and we, we snuggle up and we do kind of our prayers and I, we, we talk about the highlights of the day and what we're thankful for. And I just love seeing the world through her eyes and what's important to her. And I think it's a good way for me to stay present to what, what is important to her. Because the things that she sees and remembers would probably not be the things that I would remember from the day, you know? Um, so, and I, and I love just having that sense of accomplishment, you know? I, that's why I'm excited to read the four hour work week because I am all about efficiency and packing a lot of living into my day. So I like to wake up with a good plan and go to bed feeling super accomplished. So, and when the kids go down, that's usually my time. I put on my rooibos tea and sit and just, do some business planning and digesting. I could probably shift that to the early morning, though. I think that's the direction I need to move into. Um, okay, we need to get motoring. Okay. Uh, your favorite inspirational quote? Go. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Love it. Mm -hmm. So true. It's so true. Uh, you, you need to model what what you want to see. And so I just feel like it's such a positive way to look at things. And instead of, you know, complaining or focusing on what's negative, you can yeah. be the change that you want to see. Because everybody can be a leader in some yeah. way with what they love and Absolutely. they're passionate about. By example. Mine is, um, we see the world not as it is, but as we are, right? So it's all about like love checking that. your attitude, checking your perceptions mm -hmm. and realizing that um, just that simple shift of, of how you're perceiving things can change actually your whole experience with Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Love it. Okay. Similar, right? Yeah, they are shocking. kind of eh? shocking. We have a lot of similarities. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so so these four questions um, that we wanted to pop into our Q and A session today would be the ones that we would consistently ask our guests as well, right? Okay. So first one: What does optimal health mean to you? Okay, that's like. I know it's hard to like, answer that one a little bit. bit. For me, optimal health is just sort of this all-encompassing idea of health. So it's not just physical, and it's not just emotional, and it's not just, you know, like a mental. To me, it's sort of this all-encompassing vitality, this sort of the idea of thriving, not just surviving. Mm -hmm. like living to your full potential and being fully present and fully aware and mindful and 
Yeah. 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 It is tough, I, I, you know, and we are obviously very passionate about holistic health, hence the name of our podcast. Um, so I think it's that whole encompassing, right? Mm -hmm. um, for me, health has never been about looking good in clothes. I think it's a nice perk, but it's a, it's a much deeper thing for me. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know that. I know you know I lost my dad when he was just 35 years old. And this is a very real thing to me. I'm 33 myself with two kids, and I want to be around as long as I can for them and have the energy I need to keep up with them. And um, so to me, health is about that. It's about having the energy to do everything I want to do in this life. And I feel like health is the gateway to, to do whatever you want to do in life. You know, yeah. you know, I, I've... And to enjoy what you're doing and not just yeah. get emotions and get through. To really be in it. Yeah. yeah. And it's almost like life 2.0, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess that's what optimal health means to me, just being able to accomplish everything I want to in this life. How are you living a life of purpose? Do you want to do this one? Uh, sure. This is another hard one. Um, for me, I guess it comes down to I really try to listen to my heart and to follow my passion. And I trust that by doing that and be, by being true to myself, my authentic self, and just following wherever that may take me, that's how I lead a life of purpose. You know, to really say yes and to give my time and to enjoy the things in life that that I love and to be open to that. Yeah. And to focus my energy on that. And mm. Love it. The passion. Follow your passion. Follow your heart, right? Well, this is it because everybody has something to offer the world. And I feel like... Um, like I, I feel like I'm living a life of purpose because I'm, I know I'm definitely doing what I was meant to do. I spent a good t over 10 years in corporate management with a big coffee retail chain. I won't say who. Um, but, you know, I, I, I spent a good part of my, my whole 20s actually working up the ladder in a corporation and realizing that wasn't what I, I should be doing. I always had my head buried in a health book. And to me, I, I love what I do because it's, it's honestly, it comes to me so easily. I live my life this way and I, I'm, I'm so excited. I wake up excited every day to work with my clients online and in person to motivate them to make these changes because to me, it's um, I want to be the proof of that type of lifestyle. So it's such a rewarding thing to be um, just living your passion and, and your purpose, right? Okay. What's your non-negotiable health habit? Oh, okay, for me? It's a hard one. Mm, okay. I think I'd have to say meal prep. I just feel like it's, oh, good one. and you know what, I, I, it's not that I'm promoting people obsess over food all the time, but I just feel like there's no greater feeling than opening up your fridge and having all this healthy goodness staring you in the face. And as a busy mom, I, I it's just plan task. To, what is that plan? If you fail to plan, you plan, you plan, plan to, to fail. <laughs> plan to work, work the plan. Oh my gosh. Those two quotes came out of my mouth so much when I was in the corporate world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Gosh, <laughs> take it up. What's yours? I... Mine is tongue scraping. So. Oh, I love it. This is okay. When we first met, I fell in love with you the day you bought me one of these with the big carrot. Yeah, I bought you one for the big carrot. I was carrot. like, oh my goodness. She Okay, first of all, I just want to back up for a second. When I first met you, um, we what, okay, the one the first similarity was we both sprinkled organic cinnamon in our coffee. Yes. Then there was something else. Oh, it was we were talking about kefir. Oh, we, we went for lunch, and you. We, I was talking about how I was making my own water kefir. You're like, yeah, I, I totally make my own raw milk kefir. I'm like, done. We are yeah, friends we, for life. We got our water kefir greens. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. In London, like London's so big but so small. So anyway, yeah, you went to the big carrot, bought a tongue scraper, bought me one too. Yeah, did I buy you pink candles? You totally did. I did. So yeah. um, it's sort of every morning when I wake up. I scrape my tongue and it's just kind of, it's more symbolic that, you know, the first thing I do is something that promotes your health because in Ayurvedic medicine, your tongue is a detoxifying organ. So you scrape, so as you sleep, when you wake up, you have all sorts of stuff that your body's detox through the night on your tongue. So you scrape it away so you don't swallow it and digest it. Hmm. And, uh, so oh, just, interesting. Do you do it after you brush your teeth or no, before? before? The very first thing. Oh, okay. And before my lemon water, I scrape my tongue. Just a couple times, and it's stainless steel, and uh, yeah. So that's also the philosophy behind oil pulling. Have you ever heard of oil pulling? I've, I've tried it for a while, but mm. there's like mixed research, and especially yeah. I have um, a couple fillings, fillings, the metal fillings. So I don't know. But so we should mention on that um, same note, we're doing a mm -hmm. webinar on detoxing your home body and Here we go. beauty. Yeah, through um, my yoga teacher Megan's uh, journey, the Yogini. Uh, 
can. Yeah, we'll pull up. Anyway, we'll pull up the link we'll so you can find it. Link. But if anyone's wanting to learn more about detoxing, yes, that's right. Detoxing your body, your yeah. home, and and your brain fog, that's Rachel. Right. Yep. <laughs> Apparently. <I'm right>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, last question. Oh, this is a goodie. Okay. Who or what inspires you to live your healthiest life? For me, it would be my mom. Uh, my mom is very special to me, and uh, as the oldest of seven, I'm sort of very family oriented. And uh, my mom's just been this amazing, inspiring role model for me growing up. She's always been present. And after she had my youngest sister, she went back to school and did her PhD. And now going through the PhD process myself, I have so mm -hmm. much more appreciation for what what she did mm -hmm. raising seven children. So every seven time, children and a every PhD. Every time I think Gosh. how hard it is, I look to my mom and she's just... She's inspiring, and like I hung out with her yesterday. Did you see my Instagram? Yeah, um, your post-it notes. Yeah, we're, we're gonna write a book together, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm super, super excited about that. And so we were doing a lot of brainstorming yesterday with post-its and markers and the rain and, women. Yeah, <laughs> sort of uh, stuff. So my mom just my mom is amazing. She like she's an amazing, amazing raw chef. So mm. all of my raw stuff is from her. We've taken workshops together and she teaches me. She introduced me to my, my dehydrator. She bought me my Vitamix. Like she's just Oh wow. Yeah, she's she's amazing. She's inspiring and she's just she's so accomplished and so down to earth and so loving and yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Mine would be my dad. So he um like I said, he passed away with cancer when he was just 35, but he lived with it for about 10 years. So growing up, my dad had cancer my whole childhood, but um, he, back in that time, was playing around with a lot of different holistic health approaches to healing cancer. I remember him going on many, he went on um, a 40-day fast once. He did a whole bunch of juicing. I remember his the palms of his hands and feet were orange from all the carrot juice he used to do. So I just, I think that that was maybe my first kind of, um, interaction with health and and in taking a holistic approach and not the conventional route um, but he just really inspired me through he was just a very bold charismatic person and I think I have that same type of voice in this industry I I'm opinionated when it comes to things I don't agree with and um, obviously because that's my opinion but <laughs> I I just um, I, I'm, I'm pretty bold about you know trying to spread the message and that's why I'm so excited about this podcast I think it's just another format um, I love you. I'm so excited that we get to do this together I because I think we both bring different, um, as similar approaches, but just different experiences mm -hmm. to the table. Um, you through your love of yoga and being a teacher and the meditative side. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about where this podcast is going to go to. Too. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll wrap up yeah, on that note. Yeah. Um, cheers, Joe. We cheers. have some water kefir to celebrate our first podcast and, uh, <laughs> For those of you that don't know, this is buzzing with probiotics. Mm -hmm. Trillions of probiotics. Yeah, much more than you can get in a very expensive supplement. So, cheers, cheers. to this holistic journey together. Yes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Thanks well, for joining in, everyone. We'll see you next um, time. Yeah, we will um, have another one up for you in two weeks, and it will probably not be a video podcast. I think we're going to save this format for some of those more like you know relevant I guess times to have a video when we do in-person interviews mm -hmm. and such but um, it'll be audio from here on out thanks for tuning in hopefully um, you learned some stuff about us today um, our first topic will be up in a couple weeks and um, yeah you can engage with us with any questions mm. comments feedback anything like that on our Facebook Facebook wall Twitter Facebook health diaries Twitter yes is H -H diaries. diary and um, the website is kind of long Okay, we'll post the link. Yeah. We're still figuring out stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we, need, we need somebody to help us with that. Uh, <laughs> All so, right, yeah. well, thank you. All right. All right, peace. We'll see you guys soon. Oh, yes. <laughs> peace, love, and lemons, baby. Yeah. <laughs>